Welcome to episode four of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our very own David Stocken tackles a question sent to us by Jonathan B., a subscriber to our blog. Jonathan asks, what is a fault current path? So what is a fault current path? Well, think about, uh, um, you know, your kid perhaps sticks a fork in the outlet, right, of your uh, uh, standard plug-in outlet, and you get that spark, right? A spark happens, and then all of a sudden the lights go out, a circuit breaker trips, right? That's your, that involved, that process involved a fault current path. And we discovered this uh, that this was necessary to put that third wire ground inside of your circuit uh, a long time ago. So you can imagine we have three prongs. Most people have this where there's a third wire and that's the ground or earthing. If you're in Europe, you might have learned it as protective earth. We call it the ground wire here. But imagine for a second your refrigerator, right? It's a metal refrigerator with rubber feet on it. Right. And let's say we had no ground wire. We have our hot wire in, and it's coming in, and the motor is vibrating, vibrating. So the wires come in through the steel case of the refrigerator, and the, the compressor kicks on, kicks on, and it keeps vibrating, and it cuts a hole through the wire, and it all of a sudden touches that metal case. So now it charges that metal case, but it hits the rubber uh, 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 footings on there and it just sits there and the motor's still working everything's fine until you walk up and you touch that metal case and then uh, you complete it with your bare feet through the electrode that is your concrete floor and it comes through the concrete floor causes you to get electrocuted this is a bad thing it's uh, killed people still does unfortunately uh, OSHA has identified that uh, one of the top four deaths in the workplace happens to come from electrocutions. Still results in something like 8% of deaths in the workplace today come from electrocutions. Um, so we definitely, there's still a huge concern. Now, what we discovered, we brought in a third wire, this ground wire, into that case. And we bonded that third wire now onto that refrigerator, onto the chassis of the refrigerator. So same scenario, right? We have this refrigerator, but now we have three wires coming in. One of them is bonded straight to the case and it vibrates, vibrates, cuts the insulation, causes that uh, hot wire to touch the chassis. But now it immediately charges the chassis, but hits the ground wire, travels all the way back to your circuit breaker panel, to the transformer, and causes a massive inrush of current that causes the circuit breaker to trip. This is the fault current path for that circuit, and it's the primary purpose of that third wire that's in your uh, outlets at your home. Right? One of the key things to remember is that a fault current path has to go all the way back to the source transformer, whether you own it or not. That means in your home, if it's the the power pole outside that has the giant uh, round cylinder transformers hanging out on it that's owned by the utility company that's where the fault travels back to whether you own it or not that it has to go back to the source transformer so your kid puts the fork in the outlet causes a spark current travels down the ground wire of that circuit to your electrical panel through the neutral ground bond up to the neutral wire back to the transformer hanging out on the pole causes a massive rush of current through the winding of the transformer down the hot wire into your circuit panel to cause your circuit breaker to trip in your home so every fault has to go back to its source transformer 
And that's one of the key things to remember when analyzing a fault current path. When you're designing your circuits, you have two functions you need to look at for my electrical engineers out there. We need to understand the normal operating condition. So we make sure that during normal operating conditions, we don't have neutral currents traveling back on our grounding system. And then number two is during fault conditions, that we make sure that that fault can travel back on a metallic path all the way to the source transformer. You may not use the earth as a conductive path for at the residential uh, industrial commercial level, right? So again, our fault current path is a metallic path that is dedicated and designed to take accidental faults back to the source transformer so that our circuit breakers will function properly. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. We'll see you next time.